ready! Hello everybody and welcome back to more Plants vs. Zombies! We are on the final world now! We've gone for our front yard and our backyard, both in day and at night time. So you might be wondering what the heck World 5 has in store for us that could be any different. I mean, there's no side yard, is there? Like, what's, where are we going? Well, let's find out. Yep, we're on the roof. <laughs> Whoa, they even found a way onto your roof! Those are some persistent zombies, dude. You'll need to use cabbage poults here due to your roof's angle. Remember that and you're good to go. Yep, so World 5 is the roof. Zombies will be attacking our roof and this is where our cabbage poults are going to come in handy because, as Crazy Dave kind of indicated, our roof is sloped. And so if we have things like pea shooters, the pea shooters aren't going to be able to shoot up the slope. They'll basically shoot and it'll go into the roof. So that's where we have the cabbage poults, because the cabbage poults lob it upwards like a trebuchet and will hit zombies that way. And we have a new zombie type here, the bungee zombie. And there are actually two different types of bungee zombies that I'll be going into. But anyways, let's pick our plants first. Sunflower is an obvious one, as well as cabbage poult. I'm going to pick both potato mine and squash. Because we're going to need some help dealing with those first couple of zombies, and I don't think one of them alone will be able to take uh, care of fanes. I'm actually also going to go with snow pea. I know I mentioned before that pea plants just shoot into the roof, but there is an exception, and I'll, I'll go into that uh, in the level. We'll also get walnut and pumpkin and, I mean, cherry bomb. That should, that should be fine. All right, let's rock. So here's the gimmick. Because obviously there's no soil on the roof, we have these flower pots filled with soil, so we gotta use these. However, these zombies will eat the potted plants here. Like the flower pots of the zombies, if they reach it, they will eat them. And so, yeah. Right now, if I put my pea plants on any of these slopes over here... Here, let's put a potato mine here to fend off the zombie. But anyway, if I were to put a pea plant on any of these sloped tiles, it would just shoot right into the roof. The exception is this top column. This the rightmost column of these sloped ones. You actually can put pea plants on here and it'll shoot straight forward onto these, as you can see, flat roof tiles. Spadow. And I know I say it all the time, but uh, this world has really good music. So, yeah. The main gimmick of this world is obviously the slopes, so we gotta deal with that. And this is where the cabbage poults come in handy. So cabbage poults have the exact same DPS as a pea shooter. Their cabbages are more powerful than peas, but they don't lob them as frequently. But they do the, basically the same amount of damage over the same set of time as a pea shooter would. So on the rooftop levels, they can be pretty nice, but outside of the rooftop levels, they're not really any different. They're, they have a few differences here and there, but honestly, not too bad. They're a fun plant to, deal, to use at regardless. Yeah, but it's careful to not let the zombies eat these uh, pots, because once they eat the pots, we can't replenish them, so they're just going to be gone for good. As for the bungee zombies, they can be very annoying. They pr usually only show up at around the times for the huge waves. Okay, so yeah, so I'll show off. Hang on. So as you can see, yep, here we go. Bungee zombie will drop a target on one of your plants. We'll pick it up and carry it away. You can kill them, but they have a lot of HP, and it's very, very difficult to kill them within the time limit. So generally speaking, bungee zombies are just going to make away with your plants. They can be very obnoxious, but at least they're one and done. At this point, there's really not any strategy to taking them out. There's, there's, Unless you put down a squash, there's basically no way you're going to kill the bungee zombie. So I find it's best to just let them take your plant. So I mentioned there are two types of bungee zombies. So the first type is that one, where they'll pop down, pick up one of your plants, and leave. The other type is even nastier. Now, the other type only appears during the start of huge waves, and generally only near the final wave. Where the, the bungee zombie will, the bungee zombie will, uh, literally without even, without really warning, will just dr pop down and instead of picking up your plant, they'll drop a zombie right on your plant and then just peace out. So they can literally just drop like a cone-headed zombie right here. Now they can't 
They cannot drop something like a football zombie. They can only do a regular zombie, cone zombie, or I think a bucket zombie. But still. There you go. Yep. So they didn't even leave the targets behind. They literally were just like, here you go. You're going to deal with it. Yeah, so once you know, even though these tiles are sloped, you can put pea plants here. But watch, if I put a pea plant, like, right here... Well, I guess that was a bad example. I can show you on a future level. Anyhow, that's the first level of the roof down. Let's grab ourselves a brand new plant. And hey, that looks familiar, doesn't it? It's the flower pot for 25 sun lets you plant on the roof. So this basically allows us to bring this onto rooftop levels and put the flower pots on the roof, allowing us to actually use up more spots because while that first level gave us a huge a fairly large amount of spots to use future levels won't be as generous you can bring the flower pots on non-roof levels and they can act as like a temporary barrier but like i don't know why you would <laughs> hey neighbor got some new items for sale cool so again i'm still kind of saving up for that however there's a new uh, thing to purchase up here these roof cleaners will add an extra line of defense for those difficult roof levels so it's kind of like the pool cleaners. There are no lawnmowers right now on the roof. So if any of the zombies get to the end, we're done. But if we spend 3,000 on the roof cleaners, that basically gives us a supply of lawnmowers for the roof levels. And now there are multiple parts to the shop. So we've seen everything on this page. If we go to the next page, he has two new plants for sale. The first is Spike Rock. Plant these on your spike weeds to turn them into spike rocks. Spike rocks do twice the damage and are extremely durable. Spike rocks are pretty boss. Like, like he said, they literally deal twice the damage of spike weeds. So they, they pack a punch. And again, they still deal damage to all of the zombies that walk on top of it. Unlike the Twin Sunflower and the Gatling Pea, this is actually a nice upgrade because generally you put Spike Weed behind a barrier, which means that double damage actually is going to be useful. It'll have a unique, like, ability. It'll give you extra value over just planting an extra Spike Weed. Planting an extra Spike Weed wouldn't do much because the zombies will just be standing on one of them. And the extreme durability is really nice. You know how Spike Weed got destroyed if a single Zomboni hit it? Yeah, uh, Spike Rocks can take, like, I think. 10 zombonies before they get destroyed it's it's nuts There's, they have another use as well which i'll go into later on and then we have at the next one the absolute worst plant in the entire game the gold magnet shroom plant these on your magnet shrooms to turn them into gold magnets gold magnets collect coins and diamonds for you yeah so this is this is literally the worst plant in the game so you have you have to pick it as a separate uh plant in addition to the magnet shroom and while the nice thing is, whereas the Magnet Shroom is asleep in the daytime, the Gold Magnet Shroom is not, so you can use it in the daytime. But it's a actu it's actually downgrade. It's a downgrade. You have to spend 50 additional sun to turn a Magnet Shroom to a Gold Magnet Shroom. The Gold Magnet Shroom can no longer remove metal off of zombies. All they do is collect money for you, when it's extremely easy to just click on the money yourself. So yeah, uh, terrible plant. Don't buy that until you have literally nothing else left to buy. <laughs> We're going to the next level. Still want to save up for that next seed slot. All right. <laughs> Bungie Zombie, Vaulting Zombie, and Buckethead. Alright, so we want Sunflower, we want Flower Pot, we want Cabbage Pult. I do want Snow Pea, for that way, because again, Snow Pea still can be used on the roof. I'll bring a Squash. I don't think we need Squash and Potato Mine this time. Oh, uh, let's see what else. We'll also bring Pumpkin. I do really like Pumpkin. I guess Split Pea? One nice thing, this is... I never really thought about it before, but I suppose Split Peas can be useful on the roof, because... You can put, if you put a bunch of split peas, I guess, on the flat parts of the tiles, they can shoot backwards and potentially kill the bungee zombies. But even if you have, like, three of them, I'm still not sure if that will be enough to kill the bungee zombie before he can make off with one of your plants. Because bungee zombies have a crazy amount of HP, way more than you might expect. Alright, I guess I'll also bring cherry bomb and anything else. Jalapeno, I guess. Why not? I'm pretty much just going to be using... I'm going to use Cabbage Pults here and then, like, Snow Peas there. I, I guess I could... Oh, I should have brought Repeaters, because Repeaters you can put on the flat part of the roof as well. That's fine. Cabbage Pults do the job just fine. And I'm so glad to get sun from the sky again. Ah, oh, Squash, my old friend. I've missed you. The problem is the bungee zombies generally go for the plants towards the back, 
which is generally where you have the highest density of plants. So you can't even plant a squash to get rid of one without de deleting the plant he was going to take in the first place. In which case, just let him make off with the plant and it's no sweat off of your back. So Cabbage Pult's a pretty fun plant to use, however, you'll find most people, if you, like, talk about the game, most people bring up the fact that Cabbage Pult kind of sucks. It, it doesn't suck right now, but the main problem is uh, Cabbage Pult outside of roof levels, it's literally just an alternate pea shooter. And even on roof levels, we, we're, uh, we're pretty quickly going to get a plant that basically totally outclasses it, so. It's unfortunate, but there we go. Start planting more flower pots. You cannot put a flower pot on top of another flower pot, in case you were wondering. I'll show you. Yep. It's sad, but true. Other than that, mm, it's nice to be able to see the whole screen again, isn't it? Uh-oh. I'm actually gonna use a squash to take out that guy. I don't have enough firepower to kill him before he reaches this. And you can see the squash can hop backwards as well as forwards, which is great. Alright, Conehead Zombie, we're gonna need another snow pea here. So no new zombies. Yeah, bungee zombies, it's honestly best just to ignore them. Unless they're about to steal, like, a really high-priced plant, then maybe you can, like, shovel away a plant that's adjacent to it that's a lot cheaper, and then plant a squash. Like, maybe it's worth it. But even then, you gotta be fast on your, uh, gotta be fast with them fingers if you want to be able to do that. Alright, here's the first huge wave. So see, it's nice to know that snow peas are still valuable even this late into the game. Some of those early game plants, man, like, you might think they're not great, but like, they're still pretty good throughout the whole thing. Because it all, it really all does depend on your strategy. Alright. Head. All right, now we'll start planting another column of them cabbage pulps. I at least like how we're getting some diversity in the types of plants. It's not just... <laughs> I know we have a lot of pea shooting related plants, but I, I'm glad we also have things like, oh, it's a plant that throws cabbage at people. It's like, that's fun. I like that. It would be boring if every single plant was just an alternate version of the pea shooter. Which, I mean, I, I do think that there maybe are too many pea shooting related plants. It would have been nice to have some diversity. Well, that is one thing that Plants vs. Zombies 2 does very well. There is a lot of different types of plants out there. Like, <laughs> the first, like this game has a good amount of plants, but, well, man, Plants vs. Zombies 2 adds, like, like, it, like, hex tuples or, like, octuples the amount of plants. And, like, actually, probably more than that. There's like 500 plants in that game or something. It's crazy. You're, you're no match for our cabbages. My cabbages! Wow. Still couldn't attack us though. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. This is where the bungee zombies come out in full force, right? Sure enough. Point. Yep, sure enough, he just dropped a bucket zombie on top of, uh, my guys. Jalapeno! Yeah, 
Here we go. Cherry bomb! Booyah! And here we go. One of my favorite plants in the game right here. The thing that will totally outclass the Cabbage Pult. It's the Kernel Pult! Costs the same, 100 sun. Flings corn kernels and butter at zombies. Sounds interesting, huh? Well, I'll go over Kernel Pult here because, uh, move aside Cabbage Pult. I'm not gonna say we're never gonna use you again, but, uh, Kernel Pult is just way better. Alright. So we get Sunflower, we get Flower Pots, we get Kernel Pults, Snow Peas. Oh yeah, so this is a new zombie, the Ladder Zombie. Ladder Zombie is kind of obnoxious. So as you can see, he's holding a ladder in front of him. You know what that means. Blocks projectiles, gives him more HP, and it means that he will be immune to Snow Peas while the ladder is still there. He's also pretty fast, and Ladder Zombie is annoying. So when he reaches most plants, he'll just start smacking them with the ladder and eating them just like every other zombie. But if he reaches a barrier plant, like a walnut or a pumpkin or even a tall nut, he'll plant the ladder right in front of it. And then he and any other zombies can climb up the ladder over the plant. Even tall nuts cannot stop ladder zombies. You would think that because tall nut is so tall that he, even the ladder wouldn't reach. Nope. Ladder can bypass tall nut, so gotta watch out for that. We'll get squash. We'll get repeater. We'll get pumpkin head. Or pumpkin head. Pumpkin. And we'll get cherry bomb. I've really been under underselling Cherry Bomb. I think I've said this like five times now, but again, I used to consider Cherry Bomb like a really bad plant. It's actually been pretty useful. You just place it down and instant death. And as you can see, yeah, very few flower pots right now on this level. Only three columns of them. So yeah, the new plant we have, Kernel Pult. So Kernel Pult is basically exactly the same as Cabbage Pult, only instead of flinging uh, cabbages, he flings corn kernels. Now, the corn kernels are weaker than cabbages. So I mentioned that Cabbage Pult is the same damage per second as Pea Shooter. Kernel Pult's damage per second is less than that, because each of the kernels that he flings has the same power as a pea, but he doesn't fling them as rapidly. So you might think, well, why in the world would you ever use Kernel Pult? Doesn't that sound like, isn't that a downgrade? of Cabbage Pult? No, because he can fling corn kernels, but he can also fling butter. Now, butter, he has like, I think a 25% chance to fling it, or like a 1 in 3 chance to fling it. He, he flings it like infrequently, but still frequently enough that it happens, especially if you have multiple in a lane. You'll be seeing butter flying a lot more, and butter's really, really great, because not only does the butter have the same power as a cabbage, it will also, as you see, Freezes the zombie completely, preventing them from moving for several seconds. And yeah. So if you have just one kernel pult in a lane, it's not that great. If you have two kernel pults in a lane, unless there's a lot of zombies there, they, they aren't going to be able to move, really. As you can see, like, a single kernel pult's actually doing a fairly solid job of keeping regular zombies at bay. Wait till wait until we get two of them in a, in a lane. Like there's gonna be butterflying basically constantly. It's really good. Again, the butter deals more damage than the kernels do. And if you combine kernel pults with snow peas, oh dear lord, the, the zombies just can't move, like at all. Like, when they're, on the rare occasion they're not frozen with butter, they can barely move from being frozen. So, uh, yeah. To say that Kernel Pult is good is kind of underselling it. It's, it's an amazing plant. Even if, even if it's slightly less reliable, you do need a few of them in a lane for them to really, really take off. Because one alone, you kind of have to rely on a luck a little bit just to get an occasional butter throw. But if you have two in a lane, like, you're probably solid. Although, that, that cone zombie up there is giving us a little bit of tr uh, trouble, so we'll get a snow pea up there as well. But as you can see, not they're flinging the kernels and the butter enough. They're doing a pretty good job. That's what I like to see. 
Seems like a waste to use that when it's, there's only one zombie, but honestly, I didn't want him eating the flower pot. <laughs> and I just wanted him gone. We still have not seen Ladder Zombie yet. He'll be making his triumphant appearance. And when he does, I'll have a squash ready for him. Yeah, look at all that butterfly. I think, I think the butter chances is one in three. Alright, here we comes, here comes Ladder Zombie. Now what's nice about Ladder so things like Ladder Zombies and Screen Door Zombies and Newspaper Zombies, I mentioned that Fume Shroom will be able to bypass their, like, their defenses and be able to hit the zombie just by themselves to take out their regular HP meter. Same with both Kernel Pulse and Cabbage Pulse. Any Catapult plant will throw their projectiles over things to shields like screen doors or ladders and be able to damage the zombie themselves without damaging their equipment and allowing them to take out the zombie a little more quickly, which is nice. Especially nice for ladder zombies on the roof. Another nice thing about the catapult plants, the kernel pult and the cabbage pult, is that they can, on the pool levels, they can actually hit snorkel zombies even when they're underwater because they lob it on top of their heads. So that's actually pretty cool, giving these the catapult plants a nice use outside of the, their intended world. Yeah, like, I, like the repeater would do more consistent damage, but honestly, I feel like Kernel Pult is better, just for being able to freeze things. And being able to bypass things like Ladder Zombies. I'll put Pumpkins up here. No! My Kernel Pult. How dare you. I also want to show off what happens when a ladder zombie drops and plunks his ladder on top of a, something like a pumpkin. Because he'll only plunk his ladder down if there is a walnut, tallnut, or pumpkin in his way. Otherwise, he'll just be gets a plant that I can eat quickly. I'm going to eat it quickly. Huge wave of zombies is approaching, eh? Alright, guess I'll save up for a cherry bomb. Oh, yep, sure enough, he plunked his ladder down, and now he's hopping over the fence. They did the mash. Bonk. Alright, and this is going to be a fun plant to use. It's the coffee bean. Costs 75 sun. Plant it on a mushroom to wake it up. So with the coffee bean, we now have the option of taking our mushroom plants onto daytime levels and actually using them. Problem is, to do that, you need to take coffee bean, which is an extra seed slot, and it also makes your mushrooms more expensive, because you need to pay 75 sun to wake each one up. Coffee bean does have a fast recharge, so you can wake up uh, uh, mushrooms pretty quickly. But again, you have to question whether the 75 extra sun and the additional seed slot to take coffee bean is worth it. And 9 times out of 10, mushrooms are not worth taking in the daytime. Like, puff shrooms... Definitely not, because uh, now all of a sudden they cost 75 sun and have a very short range. Scaredy Shrooms are definitely not worth it. They cost the same as a pea shooter and do the same thing, but worse. However, there are some mushrooms that are worth taking in the daytime, as we're about to see. So, we got Ladder Zombie, we got Pogo Zombie, and we got Football Zombie. That's not good. So we're going to want Sunflower, and we're going to want Flower Pot, we're going to want Kernel Pulp. I'm going to bring Coffee Bean, and we're going to bring Magnet Shroom. Magnet Shroom is one of the few uh, mushroom-related things that are 100% worth taking in the daytime, especially if you've got a nasty combo like this. I will also be taking Doom Shroom, because uh, 200 sun for a Doom Shroom is still an absolute bargain for how ridiculously effective they are. I'll also be taking Squash, and... Uh, yep, Snow Pea. I do like me a Snow Pea. Now, one thing I... This is a... This is annoying. This is kind of a jerky thing that the game does. So you're supposed to be able to see every single type of zombie that will appear on the level right here. If you're on a rooftop level, always expect bungee zombies. Bungee zombie zombies don't always show up. Like right here, it said there's no bungee zombie here. I promise you there will be bungee zombies showing up in this level. Now, 
whether it'll have both types of bungee zombies or just the dropping variety where they drop a zombie on top of you because those zombies basically the game doesn't acknowledge even exists even though they do and they are separate from regular bungee zombies so it might be we only will see the kind that drops zombies on top of us but we also might see them try to take our plants anyhow actually do we also want pumpkin maybe pumpkin um... Or maybe tall nut if we... No, we don't need them. Maybe pumpkin for the magnet trims if I have to put them up close. Yes, yeah, sorry, snow peas. Yeah, so we only have kernel pult as our, offen as our only offensive plant, but they'll be able to do it. I have I have faith in them, because I want, I want Doom Shroom. Much like on both the uh, regular levels and the pool levels, Doom Shroom will create a crater on the roof. <laughs> doesn't look the same. It'll just kind of destroy the roofing tile, but it'll eventually repair itself, just like in real life. There we go. Squash time. One annoying thing about the ladder zombies is once they plunk the ladder down, like, it's there to stay. The only- there are only two ways to get rid of a ladder once it's plunked down. One is to attract it away via a magnet shroom. Which we did not even have the option to do on the last level because even though the magnet room is a, even though the magnet room is mainly just a magnet on top of a mushroom, if it's sleeping, it's still like its magnet doesn't work if it's asleep. The other way to remove a ladder once it's plunked down is to literally delete the plant that the ladder is on. So if they plunk a ladder on top of a tall nut, if you delete the tall nut, the ladder will disappear. It basically becomes part of the plant itself. And I think Pumpkin was a- I want- I do like having Snow Pea because it makes my Kernel Pulse twice as good. But p having Pumpkins to be able to protect the Magnet Shrooms, because Magnet Shrooms do have a limited range. They have limited reach. They can't- I can't put a Magnet Shroom like right here and attract metal all the way from across the stage. That just doesn't happen. So I need to have the Magnet Shrooms relatively close, kind of like the Planterns. And with all the zombies that we'll be facing, that will be a little dangerous. In the meantime, I want to put some kernel pults down to handle the enemies, and cool. We'll start saving up for our first magnet room. So, I'm going to put my magnet rooms right here, I think. And I'll start by putting pumpkins down, because pumpkins have a slower recharge. And here we go, yeah. So the magnet room is now asleep. And again, even though it's just a magnet on top of a mushroom, it can't attract anything. But I plant the coffee bean on, boom, it's awake, and now it's magnet works, magically. And I'll put some extra, uh, I'll put some extra offense in this uh, lane just to protect it. I know the pumpkin's doing a good job of protecting it as well. But it's always nice to go that extra mile. Now one magnet room, again, after a magnet room, I'm not sure if I ever mentioned this, after a magnet room attracts a piece of metal, it takes it about like 10 seconds for it to destroy the piece of metal before it can attract another kind. So, if we have a bunch of zombies that all have metal on them go on the screen at once, if we only have one magnet room, that will not be sufficient to attract them all off. Beautiful. So, so far, so good. We haven't seen any nasty zombies yet. I'll keep adding... <laughs> adding magnet shrooms to my collection over here. Again, a lot of Plants vs. Zombies is just anticipating what's to come and planning for it in advance. Because, much like, much like problems in real life, if you don't plan in advance for an, an anticipation, the problems can catch you off guard and you may not be able to scramble in time to address them. But if you can see what's coming, a little bit of preparation can make you well ready for anything that life has to throw at you. Well, not anything, but they can definitely minimize the damages that are caused. There we go. Get rid of that ladder.
I'll do the full column of magnet shroom pumpkins. Oh man, I love pumpkins. Well, I can't wake up a mushroom that's not there. Look at all that butterfly. No pogo stick for you. Pogo, pogo stick zombies are quite dangerous if you leave them unattended. As you saw, one of them actually reached my house in the last video and triggered my lawnmower. Oh man, we still got two huge waves left. This is one thing. Only taking Colonel Pulse as my sole... Uh, it's my sole offensive power means that uh, it will take a while to beat this stage just because their damage output is low. That doesn't change. It's just a case of well, at least they can make if they can stall the zombies. So I probably should have taken something like a repeater. Oh well, I have doom shrooms as well, which will speed up the huge uh, hu the huge waves of zombies. Corn army is complete. Beautiful. Man, there's a lot of zombies on this hole. How are they all getting to the top of my roof? Is my front yard and backyard defenses, are they lacking? And they, they can get to the house, but they're like, oh, we must climb up the roof. This is something that must happen. Just in preparation for the next huge wave, I'm planting a doom shroom. So the doom shroom is asleep. Once I plant the coffee bean on it... <laughs> It will officially wake up and then explode. And it will be glorious. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. I can't wait. So I'm gonna wait a bit. I want all the zombies to spawn in before activating Doom, otherwise some of them will escape the Doom. That should be sufficient. Uh-oh. That was close. The zombies are capable of eating a Doom Shroom or a Cherry Bomb before it goes off. It's hard for them because there's only, like, a second before they actually go off. But I have had... If you plant the Cherry Bomb right on top of, like, five zombies, the zombies might end up eating the Cherry Bomb and destroying it before it can explode. And as you can see, yep, crater on the roof. Can't plant anything there. Alright, at this point... I'm gonna start shoveling away some of my sunflowers just to plant more kernel bolts and get more offensive power. I have so much sun in the sun reserve that I'm. It's perfectly okay for me to do this. Uh oh, that pumpkin's about to be destroyed. So, again. Two columns of sunflowers, that's just a recommendation, and you don't need it for the entire round. It can help towards the end of a round to start shoveling away your sunflowers and replacing them with better plants that will help you out more. I'm still going to keep some sunflowers left just because, well, I need some sun left for things like doom shrooms and squash and any pumpkin repairs I need to make. I'm gonna see. You can remove the pumpkin without removing the magnet or whatever's inside it, but you gotta you gotta be careful. Make sure that when you click with the shovel, it's the pumpkin that's glowing and not what's inside the pumpkin. Otherwise, you might delete what's inside the pumpkin, and that's not good. Monster mash. Yeah. There's a, actually an achievement in the game for destroying five zombies with one squash. Not sure if that was five zombies or only four, but I definitely came close. And just like in real life, you can see the roof tile is repairing itself over time. Without us needing to do anything. 
You still can't put a flower pot there, but as you can see, the crater's not as big anymore. Final wave. Come on. Doom! There we go. What an explosive finish. Doom Shroom is so busted. Well worth taking on daytime stages. And here we get a watering can. Now we can play Zen Garden mode. Hey, check it out! You found a watering can! In honor of this I occasion, I present you your very own Zen Garden. Hey, I'll even start you off with a couple of sprouts. Grow them to full size and they'll reward you nicely. Have fun! Click on the watering can to pick it up. Click on a sprout to water it. Keep watering your plants if they get thirsty. So this is kind of like a little gardening simulator. But it's, it's very simple, but actually pretty fun. So we're going to keep watering our plants right here. They'll give us money for doing so, just like plants in real life. Beautiful. And eventually they'll stop asking for water. And here we go. Your plants need fertilizer to grow. Visit the shop to pick up some fertilizer. Hey, welcome to the Zen Garden section of my shop. I'll give you some fertilizer for stopping by. Take a look around and see if there's anything else you like. So these are coming soon. Gold watering can is 10,000. The gold watering can lets you water several plants at once. It's nice if you do a lot of Zen Garden, but not necessary. <laughs> Your Zen Garden plants need fertilizer to grow. Bug Zen garden plants require bug spray from time to time. It keeps them happy for an entire day. This photograph lets you play music for your Zen garden plants. It keeps them happy for an entire day. The gardening glove lets you move the Zen garden plants around. So some of these I feel like we should just start with the gardening glove. Things like bug spray and the phonograph we're not going to worry about yet. But uh, simply put, Zen garden is actually nice. Especially, here's the thing. Zen garden can get you a lot of money in game. But the thing is you can't rush it because the Zen Garden plants do take real life time to grow. So you're supposed to like put the game down, pick it up the next day, like basically play it every day. And then you can do more stuff in Zen Garden and grow plants to full size and sell them and get a profit. Stuff like that. So if, if you're going to do that, then I strongly recommend investing in some of these. But Phonograph is a one and done buy. You pay 15000 you have it forever. Bug Spray, you, you it's limited. I believe that's it for the shop. Yeah, so let's go back. Use fertilizer on these two. Oh, this is interesting. That's all you can do for now. Check back later when your plants need more nurturing. So these are two little fl different colored flowers. That's interesting. We did not have different colored flowers in the iPhone version. iPhone version, they were always white flowers. All right, then. Let's continue. Zen Garden's fun, though. I'll, I'll get more into that later on. Zen Garden's pretty nifty, huh? You could visit it any time from the main menu. But enough of that. It's time to defend your house. I have to warn you. You are going to hate this next level. Why? Because it's non-stop bungee zombie after bungee zombie. I hate those confounded bungees. I hate them. Hate them with a passion. And a vengeance. A whoop de doo I hear those idiots come right now. So as he, as he mentioned, whereas the final level of the fog is generally considered one of the worst levels, this is either second worst or the actual worst. It's a conveyor belt level where every enemy is a bungee zombie that drops stuff, and basically the only point you get are chompers. And you'll remember how I pointed out that chompers are not very good plants. Well, we have to use them. So here we go. Hope you guys enjoy a purple piranha plant. Now we do get cherry bombs occasionally, but only rarely, so we're gonna use those sparingly if we can kill a bunch of uh, enemies at once. So I'm pretty sure this guy will not finish chewing before the cone zombie arrives. I think he needs like 30 seconds or a full 60 seconds to finish chewing, but worst case scenario, we can put a chomper right behind him. Yeah, we'll put a chomper right behind him. And the chomper will be able to eat the zombie very quickly. We also get pumpkins to protect our choppers to allow them to chew a little more. Oh, cool. We have enough choppers to put one in every single call, or every single lane. I really like the concept and the design of choppers. They look really cool. They just are very inefficient at taking out zombies, which is unfortunate. Oh boy, it's a bucket zombie. <laughs> he has to walk a long way, though. I didn't pause the game. 
Oh, but my antivirus software did, because it really, really wants me to renew it. Take a hint, McAfee, I'm not renewing it. Oh, I didn't realize you can actually get more plants on the conveyor belt than you can see. That's actually kind of cool. Alright, well, so far so good. Guess I'll start putting pumpkins on some of these guys. Put them on the front guys, anyways. Alright, that's a good amount of cherry bombs. So I'm gonna save the flower pots we have in case we need to, like, hurry up and put a cherry bomb down somewhere. That's a good amount of zombies coming this way. Not too bad. So here I'm gonna pull a maneuver. I'm gonna remove the chopper that's currently eating so he, I can plant a new one so he can eat the new zombie. Again, gotta be careful to remove the chopper and not the pumpkin. So yeah, this level, I guess, is not, like, difficult once you know kind of how chompers work and have the overall strategy down, but, uh, it is annoying. Like, it's not really a fun level. Munch. A huge wave of zombies is approaching. So this is where I think we're going to be pulling out some of our cherry bombs. Uh-oh. That's not nice. Darn it, didn't get to eat that guy. Oh well. Uh oh. Uh oh. So I ate this guy, but the ladder's still here, which means that they'll be able to climb over. Okay. I got some of these guys, mainly just to free up more space back here. Munch. Oh, see, that time I was able to eat him without the ladder uh, going down. Like, maybe it's a little random? I don't know. That's a lot of zombies. Man, removing pumpkins is a lot easier in the PC version than the iPhone version. In the iPhone version, you just gotta click and kind of pray. Again, I the iPhone version is what I grew up with, alright? So that's the version that I'm gonna be comparing to a lot. That was too good of an opportunity to give it that. That was like all the zombies in one place. Take that. Alright, alright. That's a lot more zombies coming. Cherry bomb! <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Come on, hurry up and chew and swallow so you can eat more. Oh yeah, what range. Alright, huge wave of zombies. This should be the last one. And we have one cherry bomb to make use of. That's a lot of bungee zombies. Okay. You know, I could I could go for another cherry bomb right about now. Oh. 
Thank you. Boom! There we go. Thank you, Chompers. Thank you, Cherry Bombs. We have defended the roof from the bungee zombie storms. And we get a new plant, Garlic. One of my personal favorite plants, IRL. 50 Sun diverts zombies into other lanes. Now this is a very interesting and fun plant to use, but unfortunately we're out of time for today. So we'll have to go into uh, go over Garlic in more detail next time. And as you can see, our main menu is filling up just a little bit more every time we play. Look at all this stuff we have now. All that's left to unlock is survival, which I think we'll be unlocking maybe next episode. Next episode will be the final episode of the main adventure mode, but that, don't think that that's going to be the end of the Let's Play. No, no, no. There's still quite a bit of content left after that. So, in fact, I would hesitate to even say that... No, you know what? I'll just say it. After we clear adventure mode, we're not even halfway through the Let's Play. Believe it or not, there's, there's way more content to this game that I can't wait to show off. This, this game... It's just, it's so good. It get, it arguably gets even better from here on out, which is fantastic. So, I will have to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you tune in for the next time. We'll be going for the final five levels of the game, which means we'll be taking on the last bit of the zombie hordes that really want to enter our house for some reasons. Man, we must have really big brains in order for the zombies to want to eat us this badly. Well, hope you tune in then. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.